Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our point five that covers the Stargazer holiday and the trip into the high umbra of Roy and Zeb during the time after their initial scout out of Good House International when it was building its facility upon the corpse of the Winterfang. The two of you escape after viewing the obvious killing field that they were planning for you in the physical realm, avoiding once again with Dimitri the silver bear traps, you notice something strange. All of the pools of water here are cloudy. There's not a reflective surface to be found. You move and continue, leaving the bond of the former Karen, and finally find a clear and reflective pool, but a few moments later. Luna hangs in the sky, the eclipse well on its way, her body drenched in blood as she shines crimson over the lands. You approach the pool, ready to take the plunge. I'll make a quick prayer to Luna. I do actually have the right Luna's greeting. Okay. Greet the moon, sorry. I believe uh, that is Charisma Rituals. Seven dice. Woo! It's the highest I've ever gotten to roll. Oh, wow. You greet Luna, and she honors you with an additional point of rage. And then, Zeb, are you ready to go to the High Umbra with me? Let's enjoy the journey, friend. And so you sit and prepare. You gaze into the pool as you try and focus your mind. Roll to step sideways, please. I'll spend a point of willpower for this roll. Okay. Four successes. So you are able to travel into the high umbra with the ability to shapeshift and the clothes on your back. You are not able to carry or take anything else with you or project anything else with you. As you feel yourself falling into the pool, you look up and you see your bodies hanging above you as you fall into the moon herself before you awaken the bright beams of a sun hanging overhead. You sit upon a circular island of silver sands and a great placid ocean, unmoving, unchanging, surrounds you. Upon the distance you see something, though you aren't entirely sure what it is, from in each cardinal direction. I'll step forward into the water and just peer inside of it. You gaze into the water. Though the waters seem still, your reflection seems to move hither and, th hither and thither, shaking, shifting, as if unsure of which way to go in this placid environment, always moving, but always staying right where it is. Zeb, do you see what I'm seeing? I'll step up and, and look down into the water, Keegan. You see something similar, Zeb? Yours doesn't move as much but it seems that your own personality clashes with the very nature of the ocean that surrounds you. This is stasis, my friend. Eddies and currents within. Choose a path. I will follow you on this journey. I have a feeling then that we need to go this way and I'll turn around in a 180 and walk forward. You begin walking forward as you move and you get to the edge of the island, you notice that the waters seem to be absorbing this island as if the island itself is waning, but only from one direction. Though you don't see any waves. Not really. When you say Helios is above us, can we see Luna from where we are here? Um, you know, one's ascendant and one one is, you know, descendant at this point. No, it's like high noon. Okay. Which way is the water waning, or the uh, island waning? Uh, towards you. So the direction you chose is where the water is coming. I don't know what this means. As you approach, the water is moving in the same direction as you noticed, Zeb. As the moon almost, or I'm sorry, as the island looks like a gibbous moon. 
He said that's waning. Zeb, I think this is our time frame, the waxing and waning. We only have a certain amount of time for the eclipse. With that said, I don't think we can waste any time. There's nothing here on the island, so I say we push forward. I consider this important. I think there's something to learn. Keep an eye on our journey, and I agree. Let's press forward. As you step into the ocean, you feel the current pushing you one way, even though the waters remain placid. When you touch the water, no ripples form. And when you start to move one way, the current always seems to push in the opposite direction, no matter which way your body moves. When your arms stroke forward for swimming, you will feel it pre pressing on the front. And when you start to bring them back around, you feel the water pressing down upon them as they try and break the surface tension of the water. With it buffeting me every which way, I want to try and power through. Okay. And keep going in one direction. Okay. Roll intelligence. Difficulty six, please. Uh, and same to you, Zeb. As you're able to power through Zeb, you're able to get a little further than Roy as you're kind of powering through and moving. As you realize you have to think through every single arm motion. The more you think of how your movement interacts with the world around you, the easier it is to move in this place. As you continue on and you hear a crash and a boom from the opposite direction of which you are swimming. Kind of pause to gaze back, Keegan, see what that was. You see a great storm swirling as it seems to be slowly inching towards the both of you. I'll notice Zeb stop and turn around, so I'll do the same. As you see the storm and you feel something in your chest, your heart starts beating rapidly. You feel your face get flush. You feel... Can you roll willpower for me, please? Uh, just Roy. You're able to keep it under control, but you feel mad. The storm seems to stoke something within you as you see crashes and images in the lightning, as you see a clave piercing someone. You see a gunshot go off. You see death. You see Morgan in the... F the flames of the pyres that you called upon for the funeral ritual, rolling and changing with the clouds as the lightning bursts into flashes of white and crimson. No! Morgan! I'll peer at him, and I'll peer up. Okay. Whether it's an echo, consider yourself where you are. Keep moving on the journey. This is pain behind you. But I didn't know Morgan died! How could they do that? Morgan, our pack mate. This is the pain of loss and their darkness and things that would stoke our vengeance, brother. Their, their horrors know no limit. Their hate, no bounds. I know the rage within you, but you must keep going or that storm will envelop you. Let the storm take hold. I want to avenge Morgan. She died too young. She was supposed to face her family, and here she is, dead. She didn't deserve this. You feel a wet hand on your shoulder, Zeb, as the water seems to pull you down, as your head goes below water for just a moment. Ooh, all right. I'll kind of try to you know, bust out, cough, try to clear. As, you're, as you pull up, cough, and then dip one more time, you feel the hands in almost like a spidery chitter as you just hear this whisper in your ear, your fear is made manifest. We're all addicted to something more. He's addicted to that now. I'll kind of, I mean, I'll, I'll shake, thrash in the water, probably lose a little bit of, of you know any knowledge i had of how to swim properly in that moment as i kind of panic up to the surface if i can roy you see zeb dip down and come up dip down come up thrashing coughing there's a kind of 
fury and a kind of panic in his eyes. Wallowing in this pain will get you nowhere. Do you think you are alone in loss? That you are alone in tragedy? We are together in this and we know suffering. You must keep going. This is not the place to stop. This is not the stand to make with the storm upon you. From the ocean you hear a roar, Roy. I can make you bleed back. No. Not her. But the feeling of satisfaction, all you gotta do is a little favor for me. And from the water you see kind of a bubbling of mist. This sounds exactly like addiction, right? Yeah. And only Roy hears that, correct? Like, I only, Zeb only heard his version, Roy only hears this version? Yep. Okay, just wanna make it clear. I won't cheat. Through gritted teeth, it's not the satisfaction I want. It's revenge. And I don't think you can help me with that right now. Are you sure? And I'll, he'll pause for a good couple of moments. Yes, I'm sure. And then he'll turn around and walk away from addiction for the first time. As you start swimming, as you're moving, moving on as the storm continues to tread closer and closer. It's getting difficult. Zeb, you feel something catch you. And Roy, you watch him shoot down into the water. Something is pulling him. And Zeb, for a moment, it doesn't feel like you're surrounded by water. It just feels like air and you're constantly falling. Ooh. And again, I mean, I'll probably thrash around trying to you know, claw my way one way or another to contort myself to either stop the fall or control myself to, to get to the surface. As you're thrashing, continuing to go, as the air and the water pass through your hands as if they're not there at all, it is then that you hear something in your ear, something that just gets under your skin. I just, it's like a mix between Appleton and addiction as you hear them both speaking to you. We have to hold you here for a while. It's for your own good. It's for your own good. Be here. He's already let you down. Look, look, look. Could I get a perception alertness roll, Zeb? Difficulty five. You notice that the rest of the water gives kind of a off-colored glow, almost a silvery glow, except for the water that you're in, in a perfect circle of darkened water that resembles the new moon. You are being dragged down. You see chains upon the corpses. You see the chains upon body after body after body, some resembling relatives, some resembling people you've never met, their chains crafted of silver, of money, of gold. Roy, you see Zeb just drowning. I'll I'll go ahead and dive in after him. You start diving in after him. You don't have the same kind of experience as he does of it feeling like air as you start swimming down. Could I get an intelligence roll first, please? As you get down... You start moving as you grab Zeb and he feels like lead. Could I get a perception alertness roll, please? Diff six. Oof. Fuck. You start to panic, you thrash, and you strike your hand on something as you feel an incredible pain rip through your hand and take what did one lethal point of damage that will not heal until you return to your physical body. Okay. I'll keep pulling on Zeb. Okay trying as hard as I can, shifting into Krynos as I struggle more and more to pull him up. You shift into Krynos as your body buffets, and you feel these things in the water. They're pressing against you as if they're locked in place. Your shifting sh size makes you run into them. I'll see if I can't try and grab a hold of one of anything that I can, maybe okay. reaching up for a ledge. 
you grab something that feels elongated but as strong as steel as that seems to give you the leverage to start pulling Zeb up. Zeb, you feel yourself being lifted. Could I get a perception alertness check from you? You notice that there are lots of little drops in the water around Roy. It appears as if Roy is grabbing one of them. They're crimson and appear to be blood mixed in with the water. More importantly, as you look closer, as Roy moves you over to the next one, as he's trying to pull you out of this pit, the blood drops are in the shape of feathers. What kind of feathers, Keegan? That would be an intelligence academics role or intelligence science. Academics, diff seven, science, diff, uh, diff six. All right, well, luckily we got some science on the old man here. God damn, is it? Oh, are throw, you just Peter's tonight, man. <laughs> it's going to be, it's gonna be that kind of night. All the useless <laughs> roles we get good stuff on. When it's really important, I'm going to fail miserably. You're just wasting all of your Sunday roles, man. That's it. That's it. That's all right, though. This is better anyway. <laughs> They're owl feathers. Roy, as you're able to pull yourself up with Zeb, as you see kind of this this kind of platform of blood that you're able to stand upon. It's hard as steel and floats over the unmoving ocean. And are we moving, Keegan, or is it just floating in place? It's just floating in place, but it appears to be a path. So it'll kind of cough and wheeze and, and you know, hands on his knees for a minute, kind of look up with that one good eye at uh, Krynos Roy here. <sighs> Stasis and death, my friend. Stasis and death. We cannot stop. Thank you, my brother, for getting me from that, that, that despair and end. We cannot stop. We must keep moving. With that, I'll just keep, keep going then. You start to run along the pathway, moving forward until you finally get to the shore. As you see a magnificent city hanging in front of you beautiful shimmering towers immaculate in every way the street filled with people moving this way and that way take a quick look around just to kind of take it all in and then just keep moving forward um is th is there any more red on the ground no the red seemed to be what pulled you from the water itself. Then just keep moving forward. As you start to move forward, you see some people talking back and forth, each one moving. One is a vibrant, vibrant. Their body seems to shift from color to color, their clothes ever changing from different angles that you look at them, talking and chatting, ever moving or ever ever sporadic in their motion as they seem to smile as they go along. Another one who is in a fine suit, proper, prim, it's unclear. She is, she is standing tall, chatting between them. And the last is one who seems to be in rags his eyes seem to gleam with a slight green as he is also chatting back and forth between the three, though something seems odd about him and further inspection would have to be required. Are they taking any notice of us as we, as we come walking along or are they kind of engrossed in their conversation? They seem engrossed in their conversation, but they seem to be, once you get towards them, the other people seem to disappear or become at least thinner. I did mean to mention, uh, it's a bit late, but as I continue to walk, shift back into Hamid. Okay. <clears throat> um, so there was the, the tall, tall, um, good looking and like rich clothing. And then the third one was the one with green eyes and rags. What was the first one? A man who seems to have his clothes constantly changing. His eyes as well, depending on what angle you look at him from. Just approach and then take a bit more 
notice of the third one, since he's the one that has a odd feeling. Okay. As the one who seems to constantly change goes, the path, to, the best path to the center of the city is the one you choose, and your choices can change. The streets move in every which way, and it's the adventure that matters. The woman scoffs and goes, it is a straight path. There are obviously better ways. The best way to the center of the city is the one that is shown upon the map. The one in rags kind of croaks out. The road to the center of the city is unimportant. It is always been unimportant. As the woman seems to turn and look and you see her fingers close a little bit as he kind of, the one in rags seems to twinge a bit as he goes, the path she suggests is likely the most efficient, but well, I can hardly say it's pleasant. Was that said directly to me? No, it wasn't. As the okay. woman goes, you there, which way do you wish to go? You want to go to the center of the city, correct? If that answers my questions. <laughs> well, of course. The center of the city gives you everything you need to know about the city itself. As the other one goes, in, the one with the ever-changing clothes goes, no, it's the journey that gives you the, pr the idea of the city. Sure, that ha getting to the center will give you some structure, but it is really the pathways. Without the pathways, the center is meaningless. The one in rags. The true sense of the city is the suffering that you, that comes with the streets and the forgotten. That is how one knows the city and has nothing to do with the center nor the paths. As the one in the suit closes her fingers again, the one in rags seems to wince once again and goes, but the suffering is upon the paths and you can see much of the su suffering from the center. Seems like they all have reasons to take for you cannot have one without the other. I'll put on a slight, like a, a smile will curl at the edge of my lips. Zeb, we can get a better look at the city and everything around it if we just ask for a little help from Owl. And I'll go ahead and uh, open up my wings. Okay. All right, I'll do the same. And then fly up into the air. So you fly up into the air. You notice that the streets are rigid and ordered in like that perfect city planning kind of way that you rarely see in more organically grown cities like the East Coast, like Boston and Buffalo and cities of that nature. No, the cities, the streets seem to create a perfect grid, though it seems upon the edges you see builders constantly working, constantly tearing up fields and old roads and building new roads in its stead, using the material that they harvest. And in the streets you notice other parts that are run down, perfectly ordered, but it seems as if the cracks in the street are showing. And though perfectly ordered still, the disorder and the breaking down of the shiny veneer seems to break down. It seems like all three were right, Zeb. The outside's ever changing. It's a direct path to the center and there's suffering all around. The obsession with more and look what it brings them. But I think one had the right of it. There is importance here in the journey. I'm glad to be moving and traveling. This gives us much to look at, much wisdom to gain. In the distance, you once again hear the rumbles of thunder as the storm hasn't slowed. It continues to move towards you. Come, Zeb, to the center. I'm sure we'll find more there. Perhaps, brother, but I wonder about finding shelter in a city, given the nature of this storm. Hopefully we'll know more. That storm has already done enough 
to me now. I fear that I won't be able to control myself next time it gets close. Let us see what the center reveals to you then. As you fly towards the center of the city, you see a great tower that seems to move higher and higher and higher, your wings trying to carry you up as the winds start to batter you back and forth. I need both of you to roll intelligence. Zeb, you're able to hold yourself up a bit, but Roy, you are flung into one of the windows as the window shatters and you hit the ground hard as you take another point of lethal damage. God damn, I'm gonna die in here. I'll follow him into the, uh, to the window. As you go in and you look around as it's not a, the inside is a forest, a heavily misted forest with beautiful green trees that have been misted recently by rains. Roy, the forest is familiar. It is the forests of Washington. God damn it. (laughs) Uh... I'm going to have a mixture of fear and rage. Zeb, you get the se- those emotions scream out at you through your pack bond. What grieves you, brother? We are on the lands that our people love more than any. This land, specifically, is where I lost my first family. I don't know if I can contain any of my emotion now. The revenge and the loss is too much. It is not about containing or even controlling it, brother, but it's understanding it. We're all going to be shaped by it and we are in no shortage of pain, but I I honor and feel your loss. We will face it together. And so you move in, walking through the forests, the sounds of the local birds chirping as you see some familiar shapes, Roy. I'll actually get happy and rush towards those. I'm assuming they're my my family, not the yep. Garu. The okay. found family. Yeah, I would... The found family of your youth. I'll, I'll get excited and rush forward, forgetting about being in the Umbra and just, or the High Umbra, and just be happy to see them again. As you see them, hey, Roy. One grabs and pats you, like, what's up? It's been so long. Has it? Good to see you guys again. We just saw you a couple hours ago. We told you we're going to do the deal here in the forest, keep the cops off us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Roy, you notice that there's a shadow about them, kind of whispering. A shadow? Yeah, it rests upon them. It's like faint smoke that blends with the mist, you only get kind of a vague outline and you hear the constant whispering of it. Does it feel like the same whisper as addiction? Not quite close as you hear the whispering, just one more sail and then you can leave. Just one more sail. Just one more sail. Just one more sail. Just one more sail and you can be free. Just one more sail. One more addict. Give him what he wants. He chose this life. Just one more sail. It's not wrong to step on someone. It's not wrong when they do it themselves. When they do it to themselves, he'd do the same to you. Just one more sail. Just one more sail. Alright, uh, now I'm confused as to what Roy would do. Because he was a drug dealer, and he didn't care, but with his current outlook. Okay. <clears throat> Guys, I don't think this is a good idea. Not tonight. Why not tonight? As you see wind. Wind in solid form. It looks like, it looks like winter in a solid form. As someone goes, oh, sh- shit as he throws something at the winter and it shatters upon it as the storm seems to rage across them as you see them freeze and shatter. You see the dissipation of the smoke go away and then it clings onto you. Hate them. Hate them. Hate them. Hate the winter. Winter took them from you. Hate. 
rage will fill fill Roy because it's not hard to hate the pack that killed them. He's under the impression that this winter is actually just a manifestation of the pack that killed him. As you feel that rage and you feed it as Zeb, you notice that the smoke that kind of clings to Roy gets more pronounced. You hear kind of like wood crackling from it, though Roy does not. And you even hear its audible whisper as it goes, I kind of just, I'll kind of move to get, because I know Roy had gone past Zeb. I'll move to kind of at least be able to face him so I can kind of look into his eyes. Is he kind of lost? I guess I can say, is Roy like lost in thought at this point, or is he just paused there now? You can't fall this way, brother. Not this. If you think we haven't been complicit in wrongs, imagine your youth. Imagine what we have done and the mistakes we have made. It is a tragedy. It is your tragedy, your pain. But we are not so innocent. Take it from the son of a vengeful widow. Do not give in to this. The rage will stop for a second as I uh, hear Zeb's words, but it doesn't dissipate. They deserve it. They killed my family. Morgan's dead. Everyone that I've loved, dead. And it's only a matter of time when you're taken from me. There's no... I can't stop this hatred. feel like I'm drowning in it. Zeb, you notice that, like, tar is starting to form around Roy's feet? There is little comfort that I can give. You can confront these Guru that did this because they were wrong. They were guilty of killing people that were innocent, that did not deserve to die. There is nothing that I will say that would that would counter that, but this, you can, you, yes, you may drown in it. Yes, there is loss. There is so much loss for us, brother. So much loss. And there are few times when that loss dissipates and... It is no longer a matter of faith, it is a matter of conviction. If what we do matters, and every day what we do to face it matters, and we endure, and we continue, that is will and conviction, and no amount of faith will salve it, maybe not, it will never heal that pain. It will carry with you. But this, this is how we fall. This is how the greatest among us are lost. This is how the nascent are lost in their youth and they are never recovered. The whispers that make those walk the spiral, the whispers that walk away when Gaia needs them most. Many loves will pass, Roy. Their love for you never faded, even though they are no longer here. Twinge of guilt. Roy will feel a twinge of guilt for holding all of this in not being able to release it. And he'll step forward and uh, hug Zeb. Give him a hug back. As you guys embrace and you notice then that there's a door in one of the trees. Was this always here, Zeb? I do not know. Seems like our path is being chosen for us at this step. Or you are choosing it. That could also be. My actions could be choosing this path. Come. Let's go through the, let's go through here. Very well. As you open the door, you notice a stairwell that leads up. Well, I guess it's walking from here on. As you move up the stairs and there's a second door, you open it up and you're in your old neighborhood, Roy. You see an imprint of yourself with your found family laughing and chatting along the way. This is an old memory, but one that you remember vaguely. I'll pause and let the the memory play out. As they're talking, and you notice from above s- the same kind of smoke, and from the f- vague fingertips, you notice strings of rusted thread seeming to play at others. Some seem to shake it off. Others are riddled with it. As you see it pulling and stringing them, it even pulls at you, the memory of you and your friends pulling along as the rundown part of town seems to have something pulling 
constantly gnaws away at it as if it's directing it so that it can feed itself as you notice it move some into doors that are filled with razor sharp teeth and maws that f feed upon the bodies and vomit forth horrid abominations dragging them kicking and screaming in some cases though the memory of you and your friends remains exactly what you think it is as you see a car driving laden with even more of these twisted bits of rusted thread before you hear gunshots go off and you see a young man drop dead in a drive-by from the window you see a great whirling storm of winter explode and seems to shatter upon shatter everything within it just a few moments after the young man passed as everyone runs you notice your younger self running trying to shake away some of the threads and you standing there notice the winter storm burst from the window and consume the one who fired zeb this memory is not exactly how i imagine or remember it there's way too many atrocities that i did not see back then an inconvenient truth we all want to be the hero of our tale. This was this was before your first change, Roy. Is that right? It was. I didn't see the weaver pulling strings on at me or my my family. I didn't see the worm eating away at the those around me. Now I can actually put a word or a being to what happened back then. I can see a I can see that they're an enemy too, much more dangerous, as I was ignorant. I was ignorant of these, and arrogant at the same time. This puts things into a larger perspective for me, broadens my, broadens my vision. As the storm ceases to rage and becomes once again a smaller but personified version of winter itself, and you notice the same kind of smoking creature hanging upon it, seeming to whisper to the storm. You'll have to get closer to hear what it says. I don't know if I want to. Yeah, I'll go ahead and move forward. As you hear the shadow, the smoke, simply whisper, They're all the same. They chose this life. They chose the worm. No mercy for the worm. Look what they took from you. Zeb's words from the forest will ring out at this point. Loss will happen. Loss has happened. Will happen. And while I can try and stop it, it won't stop. I can only save a few at a time. I will take action against past and future conflicts as I see fit with guidance of my new family. The worm resides in us all. The rage, vengeance, addiction. Some people have it more than others, myself included, but it can't be the only thing that is in you. And you can't let it overrun your life. Again, I was ignorant back then. And I'll turn and look at Zeb, but I've got an anchor now, a new family, and I can't give that up chasing the past don't be too willing to condemn yourself out of hand for the past roy this is an equation the desperate and the forgotten the vengeful and the young trying to fight their fight feeling their own losses as we do now the loss of a pack made imagine and their rage consider the number of people we've spoken to that believe that humans are expendable and pray for us to hunt People have their beliefs that doesn't necessarily align with mine, but I think we can understand why hungry and desperate people would hear any whisper and fall to any motivation for more. We're fortunate to be together now. I am glad for this. If it wasn't for you earlier, I would have lost myself. If you hadn't pulled me out of that water, I would have drowned. 
That was a stasis that was terrifying to me. We do not need to keep score, my friend. You notice one of the doors opens up, and there are stairs that lead up. A door without teeth? A door without teeth. Okay. (laughs) Take that, yeah. Walk on through it. You walk on through it. As you see an imprint of yourself and an imprint of one of the Fenrir that killed your friends, you're holding on in your Hamid form an iron rod. It's white hot. It screams in your hands as you see charred flesh flaking and slopping off both of your hands as you stare at each other screaming you start screaming the same thing i hate you i hate you i won't forgive you you can't make me everything i hate you as the smell of charred flesh fills this place are they tangible you can try i'll walk up and put my hand on my shoulder All right, roll willpower. Diff eight, please. Aw, man. (laughs) (laughs) Here it goes. Uh, Fingers crossed. Ooh. You you feel your hand literally merging with him as you feel your hand getting hotter and hotter, and then you're able to pull away as you keep yourself separate from this image, but it's hard. You are able to hold out the pain he is feeling and the anger that's clearly boiling within him. We can hate him, but that won't make the pain go away. I realize that now. We have to make sure that this doesn't happen again for future families, for our family. That's why we have to hate him. We have to make sure we outlast him so I can take this pole and beat his fucking head in with it. In time. (sighs) As he's just holding on as it... He digs his hands in further. They get doing the same as the fire kind of licks from his hands. They will answer for their crimes, but I realize that this is wrong. Hate will always be there. I know this, for I feel it myself. Even now, looking at his face. But if you look behind you, you have people supporting us. We have people supporting us. And if you just give them the opportunity... They can help shoulder the burden just as you will and you would if we just give them the opportunity. They can help shoulder our burden just as we would and will shoulder theirs. As it turns and looks at Zeb, it's still holding on. And you see something come across its face and it softens a bit and goes, If not vengeance... Why should I exist? And he he and the Fenrir melt out of existence. The slag, the flesh, and the bones of those spirits seem to form stairs that lead up. Roy's actually gonna... Or I'm gonna stop, kneel down, and cry for a hot second. So I will just step up and kind of put a hand on his shoulder. That was well said. You needed to hear that from yourself. This is a trying time for me. Facing inner demons, I never thought I had to. I never thought I had. But I think you're right. I need to hear a lot of this come from my own mouth. But I'm thankful for every step I take that you're right here with me. Of course, brother. I've told you before. You're an explorer. Explorers have great courage. I will be here. (sighs) Then let's push on. Very well. And you start to climb the stairs. They feel like normal stairs, despite their gruesome appearance. As you continue up and you see the storm just upon the horizon. The get ripping apart your family. Morgan getting stabbed, getting shot. The unknowns, the swirling. Cora taking Morgan's clave. Everything. Constantly swirling as it gets closer and closer to the building and the windows begin to shake and rumble. So I have two options. I can either keep moving up, or I can finally face the storm. All right, how high up or how much longer to the top are we? Or does it just keep going and going and going? You don't know. We'll just keep walking. You keep walking. 
as you get up, you see kind of a you see a a beach, the waves rolling in. You see three children laughing, building sand castles, the waves coming in, washing away the sand, and one with a bucket bringing back more, one forming, and then one breaking down some of the other ones and form and giving some of the sand back to the one who's bringing it. It's peaceful, despite the howling winds that are outside, at least right now. I don't recognize the children, do I? They look kind of familiar, but different too. Like an amalgamation of many people you've come across in your life. Taking a deep breath and just enjoy the moment. You take that moment, that serenity. When you notice the one who's breaking things seems more off-put and changed as the children are growing up and getting bigger as they're building the sand castles. You notice the one, he has something wrapped around his arms and his legs as he constantly seems to be trying to do what he can and these threads cut into his arms and he bleeds. He keeps going. And it keeps happening as less and less of the sand castles are brought down and more and more sand just keeps disappearing as the sand castles get taller and taller and taller. No new sand castles, just taller ones. Until you see the one who tries to break things rip free as you see threads ripping through him. His face almost looks split into three as he grabs the one who was bringing the buckets and he starts hitting him. There may be teenagers now as he's hitting him over and over and over again, screaming, kicking, screaming, going, why did you let her hurt me? Why did you only watch? Why did you let her hurt me? Why? As he slams his hand into the towers and they bring they start crumbling down as he grabs the other one and starts hitting her as well as you see flashes of blood and worn knuckles as he keeps screaming why 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 did you let let them hurt me why did you let them hurt me why did you only watch holy crap what do you do roy so much for peace i'll run over there and because I don't know, grab this aggressor and hold him. As you pull him back, you notice that it's you, your fi- your fists bloody and beaten. And you see Cora there on the ground as you hear him screaming, Why did you let them kill him? Why did you let them kill my family? Why are you all the same? Why are you all the same? <laughs> and you wake up as you both are sitting there in front of the pool. The lunar eclipse is over. I'll slowly come out of the trance and just sit there. My inner demons, they're still more. It's recognizing that you have them, brother. They'll always be there. This is our life, but you aren't letting them master you. And that's the important part because we walk a mighty fine line. I'll go back to the question that you asked me about if somebody offered me home, would I take it? And I said that I couldn't listen to a, an easy answer given to me, knowing that there's a cost, knowing that it would take from something else. This has taken a lot from you, Roy, a lot. You have to give a little bit back to yourself and understand what your friends are going through too. I can tell you, you aren't the only one that's faced loss, but you had to see how deep your own is probably to appreciate those of others. Even after all that I've witnessed, your words still ring just as clear now that I understand. As Dimitri comes over, getting ready for your guys' foray into the library to investigate the security system, the security team, you've got just a few moments to pass words between each other. I appreciate all your help, Zeb. From here on out, I will do my very best to find and understand each demon as it comes up so that way it does not control me like these have i'm glad for this brother and i'm glad to know that i have to face my own demons that you will be there to help me too i am glad that we are in a pack and i'm glad that if you have chosen owl 
and I hope we may continue for a long time. And with that, Roy's spiritual journey has come to a close as he continues the investigation before the assault on the former Winterfang. Thank you to everyone who listened. We will catch you in that next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.